So go ahead and get started. Yeah, for our next talk, we're going to have uh, Robert McLean, who's going to present Elmod, building a community around environment modules. Okay, thank you. I'm from the University of Texas in Austin, and this is going to be a very different talk, although it does have hooks into several of the talks I've seen in this room this morning. So, first of all, I'm going to talk about what are environment modules. And environment modules are a special kind of module different than a Python module or a Lua module. They're something special and they've been around a long time, although they may not be well known to anybody outside the HPC community. Um, I'm going to talk about what things in Lua make doing LMOD interesting. My experience with building a community which is an interesting thing that's not related to my project, but I think is have will speak to at least my experience with doing that. And then I want to talk about uh, some technical solutions that I've used to build trust, because that's one of the things I think is hardest about a community. Some of the things we talked about in the in the in the first meeting was, you know, it's a small language. Do you trust it? Uh, and then some conclusions. Okay. The first talk I saw in this room was about Geeks. And Geeks is a package manager. And I kept looking at it and looking at it and looking at it and say, well, this is just another way to implement environment modules. And so let me see if I can explain. When you have a package manager like Geeks, what it does is it installs, you get a link tree. You get a, you know, a simulink tree that points to all the software that you want to talk to. And you can roll back to previous versions. And I think the way they build things, they put it in a Chirrut environment or some Chirrut on steroids to say they only build with these things that they say we're going to build with. Well, environment modules is different, but it's trying to solve the same problem. So um, environment modules are the way that the high performance computing facility um, um, uses to manage their software. So, and the environment module system is just to control the environment, the environment variables, path, setting certain variables, uh, LD library path, and those things. So, and the beauty of, of environment modules is it gives you a way, easy way to say, here's a group of, an, mo, here's a group of uh, environment variables I want to set. I want to add to the path. I want to make this package available to me. So chemistry packages, uh, biological packages, whatever. Whatever your field of science is or what you want to work on, compilers, things like that, you choose those modules to load, and that gives you that environment. So it's very similar to the way, or it's trying to solve the same problem that Geeks is trying to solve, but in a very different way. And we've been doing it for a very long time. We've been doing this since 1991. Um, so we, the beauty of environment modules is you can unload them. So you can say, I want this package, I make it available, I can unload it. As a software developer, um, this is really beautiful because I can change compilers, change libraries. Uh, in, in our world, there's an important library called MPI, which allows us to do parallel programming, and we want to be able to switch them. And this is just absolutely phenomenal. So, all right. Um, and so environment modules has been around a long time. Uh, I don't think the original paper talked about the current main version out there, which is a TCL C-based language. And how many people have heard of TCL? Okay, so TCL, in my mind, is trying to solve the same niche, or at least a lot of the same niche that Lua has. It's an embeddable, it was designed to be an embeddable language. But it's a language, so people like to write tools in it. Or, but it's my least favorite language. Okay, so why is this useful? Well, I've said most of this, but high performance computers, there's a single computer that thousands of users, well, maybe hundreds at a time, but thousands of users are on. And they're, they're all got different fields of science and they want to be able to do different things. And so modules are a convenient way to support that. And as I said, as a developer, it's just wonderful. So DDT is a, uh, debugger that also works in parallel and it's useful and so you type DDT and nothing happened because it's not in your path. So you type module load DDT and that changes your environment and then you can run DDT and it works. You unload or remove DDT module, it's not there anymore. That's, that's it. 
I'm finished. That's the talk, right? That's what, that's what environment modules are supposed to do. OK, now, we're on Unix. Did I go back? No. Now well, let's go. So what's LMOD? LMOD is a rewrite of the original environment module system. So I'm going to call, not that anybody's heard of environment modules, right? Except for this guy in the room, or a couple people in the room. A couple, anybody else heard of environment modules? Oh, wow, OK. Um, so I'm going to call the original system TMOD just because it's a TCL-based module system. And so and I can compare it with LMOD, so you know what I'm talking about. They're both environment module systems. OK. Um, LMOD was designed to solve a particular problem, which probably isn't relevant here. But if you have compilers, you have compiler-dependent modules, and you want to be able to, so like Boost. Boost is a C++ library that you want to link to. You change compilers, you'd like the, the version of Boost that you're using, you'd like to change it automatically. That's what Lua is designed to solve. OK, this is Unix. And we all learned with our mother's milk that uh, parent processes, or children, child processes inherit from their parent, not the other way around. So how can I possibly run a command that's going to change the environment, right? That should never work. Well, it's a trick. All environment module commands do is they generate text. And then they use a shell function like the one I've shown up here, which says, run LMOD, tell it you're going to want to put output bash, and give it a command, and then generate that text and then evaluate it. So that's what it's doing. It's generating text which gets evaluated. So that's how you can change your current environment. So the beauty of module files from a system, system administration point of view is we want to change the environment for people using different shells. While most of our users use bash or Z shell, well, most of our users use Bash. I'd like to stop them doing that, but that's another story. Um, but they also use TC shell, and they've got completely different syntax, uh, the way you specify how I want to set an environment variable. So what the nice thing about module files is you write them in one language, and then it expands to the language you need. So this one has three statements. It's got a help function, which says something about this module. It sets an environment variable, and it prepends the path. That's basically what most module files do. So when you run the command and you tell it you're in the bash shell, you write bash syntax. And when you're in C shell, you write C shell syntax. And you could write to other shells too. It'll also work in Python. And well, I've never done it in Lua, but you could do it. it um, there's support for fish and other shells. Um, and so when you unload the module, it figures out what things need to be unloaded and changes, pulls elements out of the path. That's why I just took the, left the path as it was before, or you can do it in C shell as well. So what's LMOD doing? So one of the things that's interesting about modules is this module file right here says, what do you do when you want to load? That's the point of a module file. But in fact, you want the action of when it loads, when it unloads, when you print help, when you do other things. There's like seven different modes that each this module file gets evaluated on. And certain things happen, certain things don't. So when you run help, only the help function runs. And the other, these other two things don't do anything. So I've showed you what happens when you do a load, what happens when you do an unload. It's reading the same module file. There's no if test in there that says, do this when you're loading, do this when you're unloading. So it reverses the action. So you write, the, you write a module file in terms of what you want to happen when load or when help. And then each function gets evaluated differently depending on what mode you're in. Loading, unloading, asking for help. So. How can you handle the different modes? You've got functions here which have to be evaluated. You've got a couple choices here. One is you have, and certain implementations do this, they have a, they have a single function with if tests. If I'm doing a set env, I'm, do, I'm trying an environment variable. If I'm, in, if I'm loading, I do this. If I'm unloading, I do this. If I'm doing help, I do nothing. But I didn't like that um, since Python, I'm sorry, Python, Jesus, Lua has um, Lua is object, a file, 
functions are first class objects, I can redefine them. I can redefine what set E and V and prepend path are and just redefine them to be either in the load version or the unload version. It works. It's ugly. Um, the third solution is what I call my class based solution, which does essentially the same thing, but it's going to use classes. So the basic form of what LMOD does is I've told you that I'm in load mode. I've simplified this as much as I can. You know, the code goes for hundreds of lines, so I don't want to bore you with that. But let's say I'm in load mode. I build what I call the master control object and call it MCP. And then when I evaluate a mo uh, module function, it gets run in a sandbox. And I'll talk more about that later. And then each of those functions, set ENV or prepend path, call the class. So depending on what, ob you know, what factory, what, what, ah, uh, what? String I pass to the build builds me a load version or the unload version or help or whatever. And so, and then the master control here, it's got a table, it constructs, a, it's a factory which constructs the right kind of object. And then, depending on, so this is the load version, it says, okay, help, it's quiet, prepend path maps to the one that really prepends the path, etc. When I'm unloading, Help is quiet again, but prepend path is remove path, and set env is the un unset path. And this is a really, took me a long time to figure out how to do this, but this was a really nice change, and it really cleaned up, because I've got one call to say which mode I want to be in. And I just, I'm in one mode, I save it away, construct a new mode, and reset it. So the other thing I really like about um, Lua is sandboxing. So I found some code. I mean, the mailing list is great and stuff. So you can find lots of stuff that's really cool. Sandboxing was really beautiful for me because I'm reading code that somebody else wrote. And they're not as good as me. <laughs> anyway, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, it's untrusted code. So running things in a sandbox is really a beautiful way because one of the things I do not want to do is expose my internal functions internal LMOD functions to module files. And I did that by accident. I said, I don't want to do that. And the other thing that I ran into is if somebody had a bad module file, it's a program. And it's going to, and when it gets evaluated inside, if I didn't use the sandbox, you just evaluate it, um, I'm going to get stack trace. And it's going to start in their code and go through mine. And it's going to look like there's a bug in LMOD when there's really not. It's a bug in the module file. So this really saved me from. Uh, doing all these things. And also, sites can add their own functions. So if I'm in a sandbox, I tell you what functions you can run. But I give you a mechanism. If you want to add a function, you can do that. Oh, I'm doing fine. OK, so one of the things, and this is, n this is not uncommon, and we've seen a couple examples of this today, where somebody picks up one, somebody decides the current big tool in their area isn't cutting anymore, and they're so ossified, they're not going to move. So it's time to rewrite. And so Tmod has been around for 20 plus years. And one of the things that's interesting about that is that Tmod doesn't have a lot of documentation. And it's very, you know, it's very terse, and a word here makes all the difference. And then people just experiment, because it's not that complicated to write a small module file and see what it does. Um, so every site does it differently. And so, um, but lots and lots of sites use environment modules. Either they're using Tmod or they're starting to use LMOD. And every new site does something completely different. I learned more and every day, I learned more and more about this simple little tool that just manages the environment. And so one of the things I wanted was a way to, for sites to control the behavior, because they, each one does it very differently. And so I have this, I have hooks. I'm an Emacs user, so I really love hooks. And I've added it with this site package thing. So if you have one and you, give it, you set in certain environment variables, it will load it for you. And users can do that. And they can register functions with hooks. So um, as a system administrator of a system that uses environment modules, we think of software as a, the module that it comes from. And we want to know we're, we're the people that usually generate those software and the modules, and we want to know what modules people use. So I've got, a, I've got a hook in there which says every time a module gets loaded, it 
it sends a message to syslog, which I can then track and put it in a database. And I can say, hey, lots of people are using this. They're not using that. Yeah, so I said all that. You, know, you can also register your site name. You can put add extra messages. And e hooks are easy to add because it's really nice. You just set up, set up you know, user registers a, writes a function, registers it in the hook, and I just call it. And if it's not there, it does nada. So one of the things that um, I love Lua tables. I mean, if you get into Lua, Lua tables are just absolutely beautiful because they can be arrays, they can be hash tables. They're just wonderful. And you want to, um, but since this is running in the shell, I have to have a way to remember the state between one call to LMOD between the next because you run the command, it goes away. You don't want to write to a file because you could have two shells running in the same directory, so you don't want to write it there. So it has to go into the environment. So what I do is the state is maintained in a Lua table. Well, Lua tables have quotes and commas and curly braces, and they just don't go nicely in the shell. So what I do is I base64 encode it break it up in 256 characters and write, you know, 1 to n, 256 characters, put it in that environment, push it there, and then pull it back when I need to. It's, it's just wonderful. And it makes um, the other thing I'm competing against only stores uh, two variables or maybe a couple more, but two variables mainly just maintain. So I can maintain a very complicated state and I can grow the state with just by adding things in the environment table, and people just don't know what it is. They're just a stream of characters. But I can add to it, change it, and it's just a really nice system. Um, so I started, well, I started programming in Lua about the time 5.0 came out. So I've been doing this a while. Uh, I first released LMOD in 2009. I decided we had this problem. I thought I'd prototype it, and I thought somebody else would pick it up. I didn't want to take over the world. I've got other things to do, or at least I thought I did. So um, I figured the TMOD community said, this is a great solution. They would pick it up. Eh, well, you know, uh, people who get involved in a project, they get enthusiastic, and then they, it goes into maintenance. They just no longer have time for it. They got other things to do. And anyway, so. I thought I'd, I'd write it in Lua. Lua is my favorite scripting language, it, and it'd be a prototype. And then I'd have to rewrite in something. And then I was amazed that Lua was fast enough. Um, in fact, one of the problems, the biggest problems we have is that it's on parallel computers, it turns out that reading one file is very cheap, and Lua does this very fast. But uh, walking a directory tree is slow on parallel file systems. It just is, and it's complicated, and I don't want to explain why, but it just is. And so working to ways to avoid that is amazing. But the prototype was fast enough. So I don't think writing in C would make any difference, because walking the directory tree would just still kill me. Um, and so this is sort of how I've been building a community. I first deployed it at TAC. And since we're not in the States, you guys, most of you probably never heard of it, which is fine. We're one of the largest open source, uh, open source science machines. So if you've got money from the National Science Foundation or National Institutes of Health, you might apply for time to run our system, and we're one of the largest. Um, and so having my tool out there got, expo got exposed to lots and lots of people who say, hey, this is a module tool, and this solves problems that I'm having. So I was able to expose my tool to people who got, to, got used to it on our system and said, hey, I want it on mine. So with um, 10,000 accounts, uh, I, get to, I get a lot of exposure. And then I first, and it was designed to really solve our problems, scratch the itch of our problems. And then I announced it on the uh, LMOD, on the environment mailing list. And I got a little bit of traction there. And then my early interaction was that a user will find Lua I mean, LMOD and, well, Lua, they don't know, that, they don't know anything about Lua. But LMOD is the answer to their problems. And sometimes I'm their new best friend. I get mails from them daily, and then I solve their problem, and they go away, and they have a new best friend, and it's not me. Um, but the other thing is, and sometimes this means stretching LMOD to do things 
that I didn't think of. And that's a good thing most of the time, but sometimes I have to say no. One of the things I refuse to do is be put in a little bit of artificial intelligence to say, do what I mean, not what I say. Because I don't know how to do that. And, and the other thing is I refuse to make core changes to LMOD that will help your site, but it will help nobody else. Now, if I can configure for it, I can handle that. But if it's a core change, no. So sometimes I have to say no. So, you know, building trust is just hard. It just takes time. Uh, we're all busy people. Nobody wants to change unless the, unless the problem, the tool that they're using is like toothpicks in the eyes. They're just not going to do it. Well, maybe a few, maybe a few adventure types, but most people are really busy and if your solution has to be better somehow. And, but they also want to know that you're going to be around to support it. And somebody asked me recently, you know, what's the funding model? How long is this project going to be around? And I said, it's open source. You know, I could be hit by a bus tomorrow. But we've been using it for years and it's mission critical for us, so that's the best I can say. Um, I created a mailing list, started getting, you know, few, you know, a few more people get on it and figure out things and ask me questions and then um, I presented this at various conferences that are important in supercomputing area. Um, as she talked about, she talked about documentation is everything and I've gotten better at it, but it's, ah, it's, it's everything. But the other thing that's been interesting is for me is that since I'm picking up something that's already been around for a long time, there's a core interface to it that I have to maintain, that I don't want to break. Um, even if I've got a better way to do it, maybe. I keep that core maintenance. I'm, I'm feel wheel, I feel free to add extensions, but the core features should work the same. So I'm trying not to break compatibility with the, re with the original. Um, language, I mean, Lua is a great language to work in, but the community is much smaller than Python. And there's been some, accept some resistance to accepting LMOD. I, uh, six months ago, I was at, no, three months ago, I was at a conference, and somebody says, I don't want to learn Lua. And I look at him and said, well, the choice is TCL. And believe me, TCL is toothpicks of the eyes. <laughs> oh. um, and Lua, well, as we all know, is just easy. It's just beautiful. Um, somebody else asked on his mailing list, when is this thing going to be ported to Python? Um, but what happens is that b writing in a language that not a lot of people know is I get lots of feature requests, but not a lot of code. Now, um, I'm not sure. Well, you get a fair amount in Python, right? But not in the core. Even in the core, and even people that maybe don't go Python. Well, Lewis doesn't seem to have that. People seem to think they can, they'll, they can you know, get into Python, and they don't seem to think that in Lua. And I have no idea why, because I think Lua's just mostly easier. Um, except for the colon versus dot issue, which, and once you get used to that, I put a lot of colons in my Python. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the, you know, I, I make that, uh, oh shit, I did it again. Um, but, so I get a lot of feature requests and bug reports, and that's great, because those, all those eyeballs are just wonderful. I find lots of things, and sometimes my mailing list thinks I'm a genius because I make a two-line change and flip it and fix it, push out, or push out, they think, whoa, he's done it again. And it's because, A, Lua is a nice language to work in, and you can be really clean, and I've been coding for a while, and I've learned a few things along the way, but I don't get much contributed code. Um, the thing that's interesting about doing this for a community, I mean, I'm on ticket duty every day, um, for, my, for the mailing list, and some user requests come up with things that I don't think I'm ever going to use, until I do. Um, and sometimes users ask the right question. I was amazed at, I had this restriction, and I'm not going to bore you with the details, but there was this tight restrictions on what, you, what kind of modules, what kind of things you could have in certain modules to do collections. And I had this firm the restriction that you couldn't do it and add, do it with collections. And he asked me something and I said, oh, shoot. I've had it wrong for years. 
and it just made that one change and all of a sudden I opened up the possibilities to be much more flexible. And so having all these users has been really great and um, and sometimes you know they just ask the right questions. And sometimes they can help solve technical problems like this user, this user thing that came across. Okay, so the other things that I've done to build trust, trust is I've got technical solutions. And I've got a couple, just I'm running out of time, right? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'll, what I want to talk about is I've got a test suite for, I've got a test suite for LMOD, which is just I live and die by. Um, you know, my tests are everything, and every time somebody submits a bug report, I've got a, I've got a test for it. It's one of my own. But the other problem I've got is logging. I have, the problem is that you're running my software on your system, and I shouldn't log on to it. So how the hell do I debug it? So, you know, I'm going to skip that. Um, the logging is just really, really the most powerful thing that happened to me. One, I've never found a good GUI debugger for, for Lua. They're, I think they're out there, but once I figured out how to do this logging, I just use it. So I developed a simple logger with indentation and curly braces, and it's always available. So out there with my code, you can put a capital minus D, load something, and get you know, detailed information about the structure, and the indentation makes all the difference in terms of figuring out what's going on. It's just, it's really wonderful. Uh, the other thing is there's lots of options to uh, LMOD, and it sometimes affects the behavior, and so every time um, you can write LMOD minus minus config and it reports a configuration. And when I actually when I do the when I do the logging, I didn't show it, but the configuration gets reported at the top of that. So I say, please send me this command, what you did, and, and I get the configuration, I get the version of Lua, I get the version of LMOD, I anyway, and that's just really wonderful. Those two things have made all the difference in terms of me being responsive to my mailing list and being able to figure out what's going on remotely, because that's, that's the key. But I'm not going to be on their system, and I shouldn't be. So this, the, the, the logging has been really powerful. And it's been an interesting ride. You know, I've got LMOD. My, I put out to SourceForge and GitHub, and people have been converting it to packages. It's on Brew, it's on Fedora, it's on Debian and Ubuntu. And LMOD has been a much more reliable thing because I've made it out available to public. All those eyeballs make a difference. It's been a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of work. And there's no way I'm going to keep all those users happy. Thank you. <laughs> Two minutes for questions. Yes? Uh, I tried out LMOD, and I wanted to install it as a module, but I guess it's not possible. Nah, it is. You can write a module that gets loaded by the TML version, yeah. and if it's loaded, you get LMOD. Yeah, but it's really it, You can define you can define Well, you need well, you need to do something. You can do it. We can talk about it. But Yes, and you can what well, no, you can't. But you can define shell functions inside of a module. Although it seems a bit incestuous. I usually do it I I tend to do it by having um we had an opt-in strategy where you would set dot use mod lmod in your directory and the startup scripts would give you either one or you could just what what do we do when we testing there's a document on the lmod read the docs which how to, says how to do transition stuff it's cool okay thank you